songs, 150. Last song. Praise you the Lord. That seems to be the final theme of song. Praise you the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. So, let's run to Webster's 1828 on dictionary. And I gotta move this a little bit. Oh, it's gonna be a little close. It says, A sacred place, particularly among the Israelites, the most retired part of the Temple of Jerusalem, called the Holy of Holies, which was kept the Ark of the Covenant, to which no person was permitted to enter except the high priest, and that once a year to intercede for the people. That's Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And how many people at their church today were in the sanctuary? We don't put you back under the Old Testament. We don't put you back under the law. Hey, I just gave you, don't get upset with me, I gave you Webster's 1828 Dictionary meaning. We're in the Old Testament. Let's see here. I, mean, I, I, I can search here. Hold on. I can do it. We got some time. So, let's see. Sanctuary. 137 times in the Bible, 132 verses, only four times in the New Testament, and it's in the book of Hebrews. I'd be like running over to Malachi and saying, you know, if you die, God will fill your storehouses. But we don't put you under the law. I'm just reading to you the Bible. I just looked up the word sanctuary. I looked it up, 1828 dictionary, didn't like that. I gave you the Bible reference. Only for the New Testament and then a book of Hebrews. You know who Hebrews are, don't you? They're not Gentiles. They're not Christians. Well, Hebrews is written to, to the Hebrews of the tribulation period, with some places the Hebrews written to the Christians. Shall we get our Bible correct, or shall we not? Because a lot of the see in church age, you've got to read over and over Revelation chapter 3. It is God's residence, God's residence with the mercy seat. In the children of Israel. Praise him in the permanent of his power and what mighty power he has. Praise him. Have we got it? Praise him. There's a hymn. Praise him. Praise him. For his mighty acts, all the work that God has done. All the work that we know he's done. All the work that we don't know what he's done. All the work that's found in the Bible. All the work that's not found in the Bible. All the works that has happened to me and has happened to you. What? God's not mighty powerful outside the Bible? Yes, he is. His mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. That's who God is. He's excellent greatness. Not just great. He's excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound trumpet. Praise Him with the sound of psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the tremble and dance. Again, we talked about that dance in Psalm 149. That's female with female, men with men, never co-ed. In the Bible. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Organs, that's the only time that shows up in the Bible, organs. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Praise him upon a loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. I mean, loud, it can be heard far away, and it, you know, the high pitch cymbals. There's a difference between loud and high pitch. Let everything that has breath praise ye, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath. 
Remember the other night we said there were no marine animals in Psalm 148? I don't know if you call a fish having breath with the gills. But if it breathes, praise the Lord. All right? Praise ye, plural, ye, plural, the Lord. So how's that? I think the last final chapter of Psalms is, has got to the point that we need to praise the Lord. And when we're praising the Lord, we need to praise the Lord some more. Now, closing Psalms, you would think, all these musical instruments. Psalm 150, verses 3, 4, and 5. They are a replacement of something that's evil. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, the king has set up an image. And the king says this golden image. You're going to fall down, you're going to worship this image. And it's three score cubits, 60 cubits by six cubits, six, six. It's in Babylon. You don't want any of your religion or anything of your church to be Egyptian, Babylonian, Roman, or Greek. So he, Nebuchadnezzar, set forth, you're going to fall down and worship this image. That's going to happen in the tribulation period. Tribulation period is going to have a name or a number. So what does Nebuchadnezzar do? He gets all the people. Verse 4, the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, rulers. And then, verse 4, then the herald cried out to you, it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages. Doesn't that sound like Psalms, what we just read, anything that has breath? I wish Psalms had a date, and I'd love to see how many years after Psalm 150, Daniel's right. Alright, so, let everything be ready to worship this image. At what time you hear the sound of the coronet, the flute, the harp, the stockbook, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. You see the parallel verses of, of Psalm 150? There's the worship and glory to God and there's the worship and glory to an image. But we're not done. If you know your Bible, you know where I'm going next. Ezekiel 28. I'm going to show you a being that is reptilic, that's a word, who was in glory, and he fell, Isaiah 14. His name was called Lucifer. And we're going to read verse 11 down because this is all about the devil. We'll see about the devil. Verse 11, Ezekiel 28. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, So this is God speaking. Son of man, Ezekiel, take a lamentation upon the king of Tyre, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom. The devil's got wisdom. Perfect in beauty, he's beautiful. He might make your covers of all your magazines. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Not the king of Tyrus. This is 588 year, years after the garden. No more than that. 4,000. Oh, this is BC 588 subtraction. God is dealing with the devil through the king of Tyrus. As Jesus dealt with Peter, get behind me, Satan. Thou hast been the garden of Eden of God. Every precious stone thy covering. Job calls it scale. Sardis, topaz, diamond, woman's best friend. Barrow, onyx, 
Jasper, Sapphire, Emerald. Emerald City, go find Oz. The Carbuncle, Gold. Every man wants gold. And workmanship of thy tabric. And all thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Lucifer was created. Thou art the anointed cherub. All right, so Ezekiel tells us in his book, Revelation tells us through John that there is a calf. All right, that's the, the domesticated animal. There is one that has a face of a man. That's human beings. There is one that has a face of an eagle. That's your flying animals. There's one that has the ox, the calf. A lion is one that has the face of a lion. That's your wild beast. That's four. There's one whole class of cherubims missing. And the class of the ones that are missing, Jesus says, come with me. I'll make you fishers of men. And Christians are so stupid, we become fish. No, we're sheep. John chapter 10. Under the devil, we are fish. Fish are a representation of Lucifer and Satan, never a Christian. Of course you're going to get it wrong because you don't read and study your Bible. I don't know if you would say fish have a breath. And when we read the chapter, there was one whole group of animals. Back to Psalms. Boy, that's interesting. We, we close off with the book, book of Psalms. And look, look where we've gone through the whole book of Psalms. We've done the first advent. We've done the second advent. We've done the tribulation period. We've seen the devil. We've seen who God is. There's no excuse for not reading your whole Bible. And the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be changed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We close with the book of Psalms.